It is an interstate project that makes you think of human ingenuity and human learningness while also thinking, what the hell were they thinking? Today we're going to talk about the I-11 project. The good news is it's already been started. Bad news is you might be scratching your head at the end of this episode. Roll the intro. What's going on, everybody? I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a wonderful time. Today, we're going to be talking about the I-11 project uh, real quick here. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a long video or not, but uh, this video is quite interesting in this project. Um, so there's quite a few things I definitely want to get into, and I forgot to already say one of the things I wanted to say. But in a nutshell, what is the I-11 project? Well, the good news is that it started quite a long while ago, and... Um, well, to suffice it to say is that it basically has just continually been growing uh, bigger and bigger and bigger as the story goes on. So, what is the backdrop? What is the backstory for this particular, um, what is this, or sorry, what is the particular story for this uh, interstate? Well, what happened was, if at least from what I understand, and I want to link you guys a video from Rogue Guy Bob. He's a guy that actually kind of got me into doing this i will hopefully link this at the end of the show but uh let me just post up oh, for you here um well i didn't mean to do that but uh just to show you guys what i'm talking about our good uh, this good man rogue guy bob does uh, some wonderful videos this is one that he did about a year ago um but he does some great backstory on how i11 gets started and uh the long story short here is that i11 was made as a bypass for US 93 between Arizona and Nevada. And uh, we'll, bring, we'll bring it up here on the corridor uh, real quickly and on the maps, is that this largely was a bypass around Hoover Dam. So where's all my buttons here? I apologize, I've got everything set up, I just, uh, getting everything changed over is a bit of a bitch. All right, Hoover Dam, right here, right? This is US 93 that goes through there. Well, the problem was is that everything uh, that was largely between the growing cities of Phoenix, Arizona, and Nevada, or, uh, sorry, Las Vegas, Nevada, was largely getting shoved onto this highway, which, don't get me wrong, like, it's it's Hoover Dam. It's built to t handle some pretty nasty weight, but on the other side of that, it was slow, it's windy, it's whirly, it's not something that you really want to, you know, take your time doing. And so Nevada and, um, Nevada and, or, and Arizona had to have a conversation. Hey, what are we going to do? Uh, because this is on the state border, we got to work together here. Uh, this highway sucks, and the worst part is it's all growing. Um, we're talking about two major metropolitan areas, that being just outside of Las Vegas, of course, which is why Nevada has largely taken the, you know, the um, largely led the spear with this particular project. But uh, down the road is Phoenix, Arizona. Now, granted, it's quite a ways down the road. But Arizona is growing at a pretty large rate, particularly Flagstaff and a few other uh, cities in the region. Now, I will get into this at a later point about how seemingly stupid it is that this city, that this state is growing. Uh, and it's not, not because they're not trying. That's not what I'm getting at. Is that in a general sense here is that this is an area that is absolutely on a shortage of water as it is. And they're trying to make it pave further and further and further as they go. Okay, <laughs> um, so yeah, here, here's the here's the nutshell um, that we've got here. Back in uh, the late '90s and early 2000s, from what I understand, is that this project was built, and uh, you got the I Lawnfer project, and it starts with a bypass in Route 93, just on the other side of the Arizona border, and because of environmental studies, is that it actually winds down through the or through the Canyon. Canyon and then around Boulder City all the way into uh, the Las Vegas area, particularly Henderson. A lot of people have raised issues with this massive 
like drip that it goes all the way around Boulder City. Like it could have gone a little bit around it. It could have gone through it if they really wanted to. But there was some environmental agency conversations that were had at this point that really made it go incredibly far south. And there's a lot of people that have raised a lot of issues here that, all right, this is why we don't always trust the eco geeks because this burns not necessarily a lot of fuel, but it's quite a bit of a distance out of the way. Now, granted, it's still faster than passing through Boulder City, but it's relatively almost at the same time limit. And that's not a good thing. When you have an interstate, you should be able to bypass with relative ease and speed around where you want to go. And the, if you actually plug in on this map here, uh, depending on traffic conditions, you can largely get through the 93 business route uh, versus the 11 or I-11 route and generally about three minutes longer. Uh, now, granted, that changes from time to time, but in, a, or in overall facet is that this is not as fast as it should have been. Uh, and, and, and to a large degree... People are quite a bit upset with that, and it's made a lot of conversations about how much we look into, uh, excuse me, how much we look into environmental studies and how much a state wants to put its foot down into making that something that is absolutely worth doing. Indiana had this with I-69, among other, uh, other things out there. Usually what happens here is that more often than not, the state puts their foot down and they just tell environmental agencies to shove off, and they'll usually have the courts back them up on that. Um, it didn't really happen this time. And a lot of people were like, oh, well, you know, it's just in the middle of nowhere. No one cares. But when it costs people money on their fuel and it kind of dishonors the actual point of the interstate system and particularly freeways. Yeah, yes. Okay. So where are we at now? Um, I am just not the most prepared guy today. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So I did talk about this particular map, right? Corridors 26, 83, and 68. All of these are separate corridors validated by acts of Congress to be part of the new interstate system. Now, some of this has a little bit of logic to it, but in some other regards, it doesn't make any damn sense at all. But let's get into the action area here. Arizona has been largely leading the charge on what I-11 is going to be because Arizona has more to gain from it. Um, what we are looking at here right now is that Nevada is actually finishing up what parts of I-11 it needs to finish up. And that is largely the studies on if they wanted to convert uh, 215 or some other route, particularly uh, 515, into part of the I-11 project. It's going to be 515, by the way. And they're going to probably convert all of US 95 or within the Nevada or sorry, Las Vegas city limits and its suburbs into interstate because they get that sweet maintenance bill and most of it is already up to interstate grade. That's not a big issue for them. And you can definitely see this on uh, my particular expressway map is that it's all geared to go. It's good. So they're not really uh, hurting for that. That's money in their pocket whenever it's all said and done. Well, yeah, there's a problem here. So the real side of this needs to be Arizona. Arizona's strapped for cash uh, in some regards because they're going through a massive build-out phase and they have to juggle all the projects. The problem with Nevada is that it doesn't make any sense to really go outside of Las Vegas. The only argument that's been had here, and you can see this on this map, is potential routes, is that um, they want to tie it into I-80. And, um, excuse me. I don't know why that says, oh, that's US 95, excuse me. They want to tie it uh, up to I-80 outside of Reno. And of course, they actually even give you an alternate route where it goes through Reno. I don't expect this to be on anybody's radar, and I sure as hell don't expect this uh, concept map here in the right-hand corner uh, to, for where it's going to go into Northern California or Northern Nevada and then to Oregon and Washington to be a big thing. That's the I-5 route. Now, don't get me wrong. This would be a blowout valve for that, but these goes through the most inhospitable parts of the continent, particularly through the um, the desert plateau of Nevada, Utah. This place is horrible, particularly the northern parts of what we call the Mojave Desert is absolutely just destructive. It will kill you. Uh, and you don't want to be... I mean, it's great to be on your car out there if you just don't want to be bothered, but if you need gas, if you need reliable sources of... Uh, rest and stop that's a little bit rough so here's the real point i-11 has largely been 
uh, mandated to be US 93. They're just going to upgrade that because it doesn't really bother anybody. It doesn't mean that they have to get it out of anybody's way. Largely through Kingsman, it'll tie in with I-40 for a quick minute all the way down to Phoenix. Now, there is a lot of conflictory information into what that is actually going to be. So we're just going to pound this one out real quick. Um, I thought I had the... Okay, cool. So, sorry, a little lost. There's a lot, big conversation. US-93 all the way through Kingsman, ties in with I-40 for a quick minute, then gets down to Wickenburg, Arizona. That is absolutely on everybody's radar. That's what they're going to do. Once it gets to Wickenburg, everybody's up in the air about what that's gonna, what's going to happen. They definitely want to tie it into Phoenix in some way, but there's a, lot, there's a big conversation on, is it going to go into Phoenix? Is it going to go out of Phoenix? Are they going to go through it, uh, around it? Uh, no one knows. And so you can see that on this map, and I'm just going to close these out as we go along. This is uh, an absolutely terrible map and uh, something that we should be uh, ashamed of. This right here would be Wickenburg uh, up here in the northern part of the study corridor, and they're looking on actually having it bypass. These three different colors are all the alternative routes for satisfying the I-20, or I'm sorry, the 26th, or the 26th corridor. I can't guarantee any of this um, because here's the reality. This place shouldn't be building up in any kind of perceivable way. They already have a water shortage. They're going into a drought or at least they're going back into what is normal for this region. Or at least as far as we can tell climatologically, Phoenix can't afford to be growing like this. Flagstaff can't be affording to grow like this. Now I get it. They're providing opportunities. They're, th they're getting things that people want and they're doing a really damn good job out of it. But to a large degree, the reason that they're able to do this is the land is cheap, there's nothing in the way, and they're able to build all this new infrastructure out because they can, and they've actually put a lot of effort into doing it. But this is not the place for it. Texas is the place for this kind of thing. The Midwest, if the, if the Midwest actually had the will to actually let people in, absolutely. But this is not the case. And so we're going to see a build out, don't get me wrong. This build out for me personally doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's find, finish this up here. Um, I-11 already is, um, we already see the Las Vegas tie-in. That's the orange route here on this particular map. The, we've got largely what we want to see. Uh, it's once you get into Wickenburg, no one knows. And there, you've got all these different ancillary routes and different uh, ideas about where they want to take it. And they could literally do the same thing that they did with... Um, uh, excuse me, with Boulder City, where they just go around all of Phoenix, and it makes it not even worth it because it doesn't tie in very well. And you're, you're going to have to build expressways just to access I-11. That doesn't serve the purpose that it really needs to, if we're being completely honest here. Uh, can it? Yes, but that's not what it needs to be. It needs to be a direct access route, largely between Las Vegas, and Las Vegas nailed it, uh, versus Phoenix. I uh, just don't know if that's going to be a thing. Um... Southern part of the route, uh, because Arizona is really investing in this. They want to build this out. Everything south of Phoenix is just as bad, if not worse. And what they're wanting to do is they're wanting to fold I-19 into that particular project. So what very is likely to happen is that at some point, not saying exclusively, they're probably wanting to tie in with I-10 or right around where I-8 or where I merges in. So you'll have I-10, I-8 I ends, I-11 merge together for a bit, and then they'll shoot off down and interrelate with I-19. And it actually serves the purpose of the corridor writ large. And you can just re reorganize everything so that you can get rid of a couple numbers. I talked about this. They are absolutely wanting to do that. Uh, but it won't really save Arizona much in the way of money. And those are wanting to build a whole, or a whole bunch of new roads. And that's a lot of upfront cost. So, yes, uh, the Arizona part. We'll see, just for anyone who wants to know, you will see all of us 93 from hoover dam going south into kingsman it'll tie in at some point with i-40 probably right here at the interchange you'll probably see a new interchange or something just outside of that tie in and of course when you get to the off-ramp here we'll start building that into interstate and that will go all the way down into uh wickenburg and then at that point it's up in the air uh because arizona needs to make up their dome or their minds uh some people are talking about tying into the Sun Valley Parkway, which isn't the worst idea in the world, actually. Um, and then tying into, what is this, Arizona 85. 
So plenty of options to get into. You can actually even tie into I8 and part make that part of the uh, make this part of the system writ large. Uh, not the worst idea, but mm, it doesn't have that direct access that they really need. Um, if that what they really need to do. And granted that th this is an incredible exorbitant amount of money, but all of Grand Avenue uh, to a large degree would need to be upgraded if they wanted to make this worthwhile. Uh, if not. Um, they're going to have to tie into one of these major roads at some point. Um, I can't remember what this is. The Arizona 303. Uh, that, that's possible. There's options. There absolutely is options. The problem is they just have to figure out where they're going to go, and I just can't tell you. And for anyone who wants to see this on satellite, Hoover Dam is here. Goes through some wonderful terrain features. It's actually not nearly as... Um, this area is not nearly as elevated and as stringent as it may look. If you look here, um, you know, already in a pretty good spot. I don't know why that's blurred out. 65 mile an hour speed limit, so it's largely interstate grade already. And, uh, you know, it goes through some pretty flat land. It looks pretty nasty on satellite, don't get me wrong. But you can tell it's actually built through the corridor in a particular way that they don't have to upgrade a lot of this stuff. Um, now, there's parts where they absolutely do. Some of this is not four-lane undivided highway. Uh, as an example through here, this was originally what this was like. And I believe that some of this has actually been upgraded already as part of the I-11 program. They just haven't officially designated it as such. I don't know why. But uh, they are building out uh, quite extensively on this one. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on with the study programs and why they haven't actually updated some of these. I think some of it is to do with the few interchanges that they have, particularly outside of Kingsman, or I'm sorry, not Kingsman, uh, particularly outside of, uh, yeah, it was Kingsman, I apologize. Um, I'm grinding a little bit. Um, yes, this does not work. But anyway, uh, I think you all get the idea of what we're talking about here. Now, a lot of people have talked about the, you know, the expansion into the greater region as a whole, um, which we can see on this map where they want to go as another USMC NAFTA corridor. No, just no, it's not going to happen. Get out of here. Um, it's too sparsely populated. It's not going to add, add for development, especially in an area that makes no sense to actually be there in development. Um, so in a general sense here is that I'm going to be wrapping up, uh, but it will largely tie in Phoenix. It will largely help tie in Tucson. Uh, the problem is that most of this is actually going to tie up over um, I-10 and where I, or I-11, or, sorry, I-8 crowds in. And then it'll supersede I-19. You can do that. We, we, we do have uh, significant areas where two interstates merge together, um, even though they have a similar or uh, differentiating role. I-80 and I-90 in, in Indiana is all one highway all the way until where it ties in in Illinois and it ties in at uh, in Ohio. So throughout my entire state, which is over 200 miles, is that... Um, you know, I-80s and I-90, and they serve the same purpose. Um, East-West and North-South, uh, nor or sorry, North-South is largely I-11. Uh, East-West is largely I-10. Uh, th these don't necessarily go where they really should. Um, so they'll be tying in and they'll be overlapping to quite a degree, which is actually something we don't usually see. But you can probably tell by this map, I-10 does a lot of North-South between uh, Phoenix and Tucson, so... Not going to say they're going to get rid of I-10, but you'll definitely see that probably integrated into the system writ large. And that just means, where does I-11 crawl in an I-10 at? And for me, um, that is the weirdest interstate ever, I-17. <laughs> it's ridiculous. For me, it makes sense to just tie it in uh, down, the grand, or down this particular road. But if you don't do that, you've got multiple entry points to do this just up to Arizona. So let me know, Arizona, what you're doing. Um, I have been looking at the study projects. I, nothing's been finalized yet, as far as I'm aware. If anyone has any contradictory information to that, please let me know because I've got a lot of studies on Texas uh, in, program, in the programs that they're going to be working on when it comes to I-69 and I-58 or I-57. I-11 I is just largely just up in the air. So, uh, yeah, I think I've mumbled and I've mumbled quite a bit as it is. Uh, if anyone is interested, I will try to link the video about i11 and the start of it in the um in the outro so definitely check out that or check that out particularly rogue guy bob um which you can see here i love his channel not everything's going to be your thing but if you're interested in how traffic flows work and traffic engineering he's a great guy for this 
and uh, he's got quite a bit of information regarding all of this. And you can see actually there's personal interviews. And uh, here we talk about the, right here, is where he's talking about the rerouting of I-11 around uh, the general area. So plenty of stuff to do there. Without further ado, I've been Tiberius D. The next project we're going to be is the new green-lighted I-14 project, which is uh, also something that makes me scratch my head. But it makes me scratch my head for a lot of different reasons. So feel free to check that out next time. See you guys.